I take you to be my husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish until parted by death. This is my solemn vow. Are we going to dive into the vow here and, and go for it? Okay. Uh, this has been a great start to a great day, and I'm excited to see uh, where God takes us together today, because we're diving into some really important content. And I got to be honest, we got to give a shout out before we dive in any farther. Uh, our Mishawaka campus is having an indoor block party today. Let's give it up for our Mishawaka campus. They're connecting all kinds of people today in our community. We're so glad that you've joined us today and hope you're having a great time. Uh, the reality is that we're doing everything that we can in every location possible to connect as many people to Jesus as we can. I was just celebrating this earlier this week. I, honestly, it's been a long time. There have been a lot of Sundays that we've had people who've made a, a decision to say yes to Jesus. I can't remember the last Sunday we had here at Crossroads where somebody didn't make a decision to say yes to Jesus. And I'm just excited as I could possibly be that people are encountering Jesus. They're saying yes and lives are being changed. Let's get excited about that today because this is where lives are being changed. And the reality is... When we talk about that in the context of marriage, excuse me, <clears throat> I'm getting choked up talking about this. The reality is where it starts is important. And the first vow that we talked about in this series was the vow of priority. And the vow that we all agreed on two weeks ago is that I promise that God will be my first priority and my spouse will be my second. That is where this all began. And that's the foundation that our strongest marriages have to build on. And the reality is, whether you're single or whether you're married, that's going to be how you build the foundation for the best possible version of your life that God longs for you to be. It, it starts with priorities. Is God going to be first? It says in Matthew 6, Jesus' words, seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and all these other things in life that we worry about will be added to us as well. It's, it's God first and then when you get married, it's your spouse second. That means that your spouse becomes the most important human relationship in your life, which leads to the second vow that we talked about last week. It's, I will promise to always pursue my two. I will continually pursue my spouse the same way that God pursues me. I will show that same love that God has for us to my spouse. And that means husbands, we love our wives. Wives, we love our husbands. And we love with the love that God has for us, that deepest level of love. It's not just passionate love, not just love based on feeling or emotion. That is the deepest kind of love, that agape love. It is a deeply committed love. It is selfless. It is sacrificial. It serves. And that leads into what we're talking about today, our third vow. And that simply says this, I promise our marriage will be about we and not me. All right, let's all say that together. Let's say it out loud. I promise our marriage will be about we and not me. All right, this is a great place to start because the reality is that's the big hurdle we have to overcome. Uh, until you get married, life can really just be about you, right? Me, 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 me. And in our culture today, that's par for the course. That's great because it's all pretty much centered around us. We are the center of our own universes. And yet when we choose to get married, that whole mindset has to shift. It says in Genesis 2.24, a verse we've been talking about for the last few weeks. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. The reality here is that the picture there that you see in the Hebrew is this, this two um, two part process of two becoming one is something that represents total unity. This represents something that is united as one. The same word that is used in the Hebrew to describe uh, two becoming one in marriage is the same word that describes God himself in the Old Testament as, as that entity, the Trinity, three in one, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. That same word is used to designate that description of the three in one. God, God is himself united together as one. And the same picture that represents God in that way is what represents our marriages. It's a, it's a pretty powerful picture of the joining of two things together. They are to be inseparable. And, and that's the, 
That's the difficult part, right? Because now I'm making the transition from me to we. It's not just about me anymore. I'm, I'm marrying someone who does things completely different. And listen, I got to go there. Again, People who are not married, don't just tune this out. You can learn from this. If you're looking to get married soon, listen up. This is going to help you, all right? If you're like, I would never want to get married in a million years. I'm totally happy being the way I am. This still helps you become the person God has called you to be. We're talking about important principles, so lean in today. The reality is, though, when you choose to get married, you are making that shift. Two are becoming one, united and joined together. Me has to become we. And the, the difficult part of marriage, and I talk about this every time that I do premarital counseling for a couple, is that everything is going to change. When you're dating, opposites attract, right? You see the person in your life like, oh my, that person I'm wildly attracted to. And part of that attraction comes from the realization they have strengths in their life that I don't have. For me, I've always kind of been procrastinator, especially high school, college, like study. I've got six hours before that test. I have plenty of time. Dana was like study habits, perfect. Studying, doing the routine, perfect. Trying to do her best to get the A plus. She's going for the perfect GPA. And I'm going, if I can sneak in an A minus, I'm 100% okay with that. That's whatever it takes. Um, we were wired differently. I was spontaneous, fun. Dana's like, I'm organized, I'm structured, I've got this now. I was attracted to her, she was attracted to me. Opposites attract. But when you get married, all of a sudden what happens is opposites now attack because it's different. <laughs> it's different. Like, hey, I don't like that. Uh, it becomes a problem. So for me, <laughs> what, the battleground in our house, can I just be honest and vulnerable with you? Don't judge what I'm about to say. The battleground in our home is actually our laundry room. Is that true with anyone else or just me? It's our laundry room. That has become ground zero for all of the battles in our house. Because what happens for me is like I take off my shoes, I throw them on the floor in the laundry room. Uh, you know, take off the jeans, I throw the belt. I just have it all strewn about the countertop in the laundry room. It's the laundry room. It's for clothes. We're not trying to impress anybody. If I'm throwing a hat there to wear later, I just put it on the counter. It, it works for me. Thank you. <laughs> Men, we, we need to unite here. <laughs> the thing about Dana is she has a place for everything. Is there any women that want to say amen or is that just, okay, okay, got it, got it. Okay. Or men, I, it can be either one. <clears throat> she has a place for everything. And so I mean, this happened just this week. I literally, I was going to go work out. I threw a t-shirt on the counter in the laundry room, and I had to go get something. I was like, go downstairs, get my shoes or something. I go downstairs. I was gone for 30 seconds. 30 seconds. I came back up, t-shirt gone. <laughs> How? How did you do that? That's extraordinary and really irritating. We actually have a sign in our laundry room that says, nothing is really lost until your mom can't find it. <laughs> and it's so true. It's so true. And so, so that becomes battleground, right? Like, I'm wired differently than Dana. She's wired differently. Is one of us wrong? No, probably not. Probably I'm more wrong than she is. Things need to have a place. Keeps the home nice and neat. It's perfect. I love that. But the reality is there's always friction there, right? So when you're dating, opposites attract. When you get married, opposites attack. Like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. So you have to make that shift, right? It's not about me. It's about we, you have united together, and you guys, it's a vow. It is a covenant. It is a sacred vow. For better, for worse, I'm missing my T-shirt. It's going to be okay. For better, for worse. <laughs> in sickness and in health, good times and bad, we honor and cherish till death do us part. You know, Jesus spoke to this. He added on to what it says in Genesis 2. In Matthew 19, Jesus speaks into this by saying this. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united his, to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. I mean, this is the joining again of two becoming one in a sacred union. It says, so they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. I mean, he's painting the picture here of this beautiful marriage covenant where 
two have become one. A sacred covenant has been made before God. A sacred covenant has been made to each other. And there's this beautiful relationship in this journey that begins. And listen, I, I want to be mindful today before we dive in any deeper. I get it. Uh, the reason we're talking about marriage is because so many marriages are struggling. So many marriages have failed. And I, I want you to know today that if you're here today and you've gone through a divorce and you've, you've dealt with the hurt and the pain of everything that that entails, I, I don't want you today to be looking back and beating yourself up. Today, I want you to regroup and I want you to look forward. I want you to dream about who you can be, what the plan is that God has for you. I want you to learn uh, what God has for you and become the best version of yourself that, that God has dreamed of, of, of you becoming. That's what I want today. Don't look back. The past is the past. The beautiful thing about Jesus is that when I come to Jesus, I say, God, I need you to forgive me. I mean, as far as the East is from the West, he separates that from us. Can I get an amen or an, a shout out or something? Is anybody else excited about that? I need that. Uh, as far as the East is from the West, he separates that from us. He throws it into the bottom of the ocean, never to be found again. And so I don't want you to, to beat yourself up over your past. That's what the devil's trying to do. He's trying to remind you of your past, tell you all the reasons why you could never become who God created you to be. Don't listen to that. Draw close to the voice of Jesus today, all right? Be encouraged. Uh, it's, life is not through. You, you can move forward, all right? I, I, hear me. Be encouraged today. So when we talk about this, this marriage covenant, this beautiful and sacred thing that, that God has created for us to experience, let's talk about this in, in light of this vow of partnership. Two becoming one. Now it's not about me anymore. It's about we. Let's talk about this. Marriage is a covenant not a contract. This is a really important difference to identify. We need to circle this, and here's why. A contract is based on mutual distrust, all right? Think about that for a second. A, a contract is based on mutual distrust. So, uh, distrust. If you, if you own a home and you're renting it out to somebody, uh, what do you do? Do you just say, hey, here's the keys. Just pay me whatever. I, yeah, you're good for it. That never happens. You know, no. There's a contract. And why is that? Because the landlord doesn't trust you with his house, right? You're going to give me a deposit in case you damage it. You're going to give me the first month's rent. And this is how much you're going to give me every month on the first of the month. It's based on distrust. And basically, you're signing something too. You're saying, hey, if I sign this agreement, you're going to fix things when they break. This is, we are holding each other accountable. This has been written in a contract. Why? Because because I don't trust you, all right? That's, that's a contract, all right? And rightfully so. People burn each other all the time. It is what it is. You sign the contract. Well, a covenant is not like that at all. A covenant is completely different. And we enter into a covenant when we enter into marriage. A covenant is based on mutual commitment, and this changes everything. It's not me, you know, being 50% in on my marriage, you know, my wife being 50% on the marriage. No, we are both 100% in. We're not out there looking for the better deal, right? And what happens in our culture, and can I, can I just be slightly offensive for just one minute? What happens in our culture? Well, it's become completely acceptable to practice marriage. And what do I mean by that? Well, instead of diving in and making this covenant, I'm going all in, following the plan that God has laid out for us, we practice marriage. And we say, well, let's see how this goes. So what do we do? We, we find that person we really like, but we're not ready to get married, so what do we do? We practice marriage. We move in together. We practice all of the marriage things. There's some kids in there. Uh, we, we practice all the marriage things, and, and we enjoy that relationship for a while. But what happens? When the emotions start to fade, when the passion starts to go away, we say, well, this really isn't working for me. And then what do we do? We begin practicing divorce. Well, here's all my stuff. Here's your stuff. All right. Sorry that didn't work out. We'll see you later. And then we find someone new and we practice marriage all over again. It doesn't work out. We practice divorce. And it's, it's a bad cycle. It sets us up for failure. That's not what God's picture for us is. It's, it's way different than the covenant relationship that God has called us to. Because the covenant relationship says, I'm all in. That's what makes it sacred. That's what makes it beautiful. In the presence of God, I am 100% committed to this relationship. In good times and bad, for rich or for poor, in sickness and in health, we're in this together. That's what makes it beautiful. That's what gives you the platform to truly showcase the love that God has shown us and to reflect that into this relationship. Because that's when love shines the brightest, is in the difficult times. 
That, that's when life gets meaningful and the deepest sense of fulfillment. You have weathered the storm. You have come out stronger. Till death do us part, that holy covenant is based on commitment. And that changes everything. It's completely different. It's not about me. It's about we. I'm not looking for some better deal. I'm in. Let's do this. There's no turning back. And that's why it's beautiful and that's why it's sacred. I remember a few years back, uh, Dan and I had the, the privilege of going to the Holy Land and uh, seeing Jerusalem, the Sea of Galilee, going down to the Dead Sea. And I remember coming back from the Dead Sea, there's this drive back, it's like a four-hour drive in a bus, and you stop at this parking lot with a gas station. They've got like all these, you know, souvenir stands and whatnot. But out in the parking lot was a guy with a camel. I mean, just that's what he does for a living. He bought a camel, and then all the tourists come through, and he's like, hey, want to take a ride on my camel? And, and we all did, because we're tourists. That's what we did. So Dana wanted to ride the camel, and it's like five bucks to ride the camel like here you go he takes Dana around the parking lot we're taking all the pictures and I remember I was live streaming this on on Facebook that was before my account got blocked I don't know what's going on there they don't like me um so (laughs) by the way if you've tried to message me on the old Facebook I did not get that message you just need to know that okay so just public service announcement um so I was face, Facebook live streaming this the guy comes around and we're all laughing the camel gets down and the guy looks at me and he says (sighs) can I trade you my camel for your wife? (laughs) That happened. That happened. And so I'm like, well, let me check out this camel. (laughs) No, no, it's not what I said. I actually said, I said, no, she is worth many camels. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) No, I'm not going to trade you my wife for a camel. What is this? But that's the idea, right? Like we're trying, we're trying to find some better deal. Like uh, that's a relationship that's, that's built on distrust, right? That's, that's not God's plan for marriage. We're 100%. We're, we're all in on this. That's what partnership is. And so the covenant partnership is summarized with godly leadership and mutual submission. These are words that we don't talk about enough. Godly leadership and mutual submission. And I want, to, I want to talk about these important traits here and principles through the lens of Ephesians chapter 5. I mean, Paul does a deep dive into this, and it's all a reflection of this beautiful love that God has for us. It's, it's, it's not about me. It's about we. And the problem is when we get that backwards, that's when we get ourselves in trouble. And so this is a really important vow. Ephesians 5 begins in verse 21 with Paul saying this. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. This is Paul specifically talking to husbands and wives. This is what he begins the whole thought with. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Why? Because this is a reflection of the love that he has for us. He has submitted himself to us. He has loved us with a selfless love. He loved us when we were his enemy. He loved us when we were far from him. He has gone above and beyond to to pay the price that we couldn't pay. He loves us with a selfless love. And that's what Paul says out of the gate. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. It's not about me. It's about we. It's two that have become one. We are united. We are one. We have made a holy covenant to each other. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. It goes on to say, and this is more for the wives and it's more for the husbands. And let me preface this by saying, these verses have been taken wildly out of context, and we're going to talk about that, but listen. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Here's the thing. I need to stop right here and we need to talk about this. What he is talking about specifically here is spiritual leadership. Guys, we are called to be the spiritual leaders of our marriages. We will be held accountable for that, for how we did in nurturing the spiritual uh, nature of our families and our marriages. And I want to challenge, guys, don't run away from this responsibility. Don't abdicate this responsibility because it's awkward or uncomfortable sometimes. What that means is, guys, we are called to set the tone. We are called to cast the vision. 
We're there to dream about where our marriages can go, where our families can go, how we can fully live into the plan that God has for us. This doesn't mean that you are the one calling the shots and making every decision in the relationship, that whatever you say or feel goes and the wife just submits. That's not what that means. And guys, if you're struggling with that, like, well, my wife doesn't honor me or she doesn't respect me. Let me just say this. This might hurt. Give her something to respect. Lead. Lead in a way that's honorable. Set a tone that she's going to go, man, I love this guy. Remember, if you pray that prayer and she's looking for spiritual leadership, that could be the hottest you've ever been. And why, as I told you last week, say that. When you prayed that prayer, that was the hottest you've ever been to me. And guys, we'll respond. We'll pray better prayers. We really will. That's, that's what works for us. But guys, we're, we're called to set the tone. And I feel like this, this, these verses have been taken out of context. They've been abused, and it's caused a lot of pain in a lot of, of relationships. And I just want to encourage you that man, it may be part of your past. You've been carrying some hurts around with this because this leads to abusive relationships in a lot of different ways. Man, if, if your husband's telling you something that's against what God tells you to do, that, that's not biblical. You know what I'm saying? Let, let's just be real about this. Guys, we've got to lead the way. This is calling us to lead the way as spiritual leaders of our homes, okay? Let's not take that for what it isn't. You're not the dictator of your home. You're not the Vladimir Putin of your house, okay? That's not, that's not how God has called us to act. Was that too soon? That's too soon. Um, that, that is not who God has called us to be. The whole, the whole setup for this is submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. But I will say, ladies, if your husband is leading the way spiritually, follow that lead. Man, let him guide you toward a better relationship spiritually. Let him lead the house toward Jesus, Because here's what it says to the guys. Husbands, this means love your wives just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her. I mean, that speaks to sacrifice, right? God's love is selfless. It is sacrificial. It serves. This is the sacrificial part of that love. Husbands, we are supposed to love our wives with that sacrificial love. We lead the way in that whole idea. It's not about me. It's, It's about the we, I, we lead the way. Love your wives just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her. And I would contend today that if we are each loving each other in this way, wives loving husbands, husbands loving wives with that selfless, sacrificial love that serves, I tell you, that's going to set, set the stage and build the foundation for the strongest marriage you could ever hope to have. Because that's the deepest kind of love. I want what's best for my wife. I'm going to do anything it takes to make that happen, to make her dreams come true, to be her biggest cheerleader. Wives loving the husbands the same way. I love my husband. I I want to make his dreams come true. I'm going to be his biggest cheerleader. If we love each other with that selfless, sacrificial love that serves, it's a game changer. It's the deepest kind of love. It's not based on the feelings or emotion. That's based on commitment. We're, We're in this together. And that is deep. That changes everything. He, he wraps it up in, in verse 33 by, by emphasizing it again. He says, so again I say, each man must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. This is the love that serves. I mean, it, it really is a, an amazing reflection of the love that God has shown us. And I, I want to encourage you today, and this is the deepest level of love I believe that we can experience in this lifetime. And, and, and you can get here. I don't think this is something that happens overnight. This takes work. Marriage is work. And remember at the beginning, opposites attract when you're dating, and in marriage, opposites attack. Oh, man, sometimes it can be difficult. But the reality is, if we can make the covenant, make the vow that God is my first priority, I'm going to love him with everything I've got and draw close to him, then those attributes are going to start to showcase in my life, right? Because his love is patient. It is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It keeps no records of wrong. If that's who I am becoming, and I am making my spouse my second most important relationship, I am pursuing my spouse with everything I have, and I'm committing to say, it's not about me, it's about we, that sets the foundation for this beautiful relationship that's based on the deepest type of love. And I would contend that that kind of relationship, if it's built on the right foundation, it only gets stronger over time, and it is a beautiful thing. I mean, you talk about passing the legacy of faith onto the next generation. You guys, the healthy marriages are going to create healthy families, and the healthy families are going to create healthy kids, healthy kids that go out and own their faith and continue that ripple effect of connecting people with Jesus for generations to come. 
what we do in our marriage is it matters. I promise our marriage will be about we and not me. I think at the end of the day, your marriage will be as good as you both decide it will be. I think that's why just taking moments to kind of reflect on where we're at in our marriages, how we can do better, these are important moments. Because the more we are intentional in, in building our marriages, the better that they're going to be. Your marriage will be as good as you both decide it will be. I love what Joshua said in Joshua 24. At the end of his leadership of Israel, uh, he recognized that the the Israelites were coming to a place where they were going to face temptations. They were going to have a couple of different paths that they could choose. And he realized that this was a decision point that was going to matter. And so he charges the entire nation of Israel with many of the same principles that we're talking about in marriage today. He says, so fear the Lord and serve him wholeheartedly. Make God your highest priority. Put away forever the idols your ancestors worshipped when they lived beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt. Serve the Lord alone. Pursue him. Chase him with everything that you have. But if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. Would you prefer the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates, or will it be the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now live? And then he says the statement that so many of us are familiar with. He says, but as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. And that's the commitment, right? That's saying God is my highest priority. And after God, it's my spouse. I'm going to pursue my two. This relationship is not about me. It is about we. And it is a covenant relationship. We are united as one. This is a sacred and beautiful thing. And it's, it's not always going to be easy. It's work. You're not always going to feel like doing it. I don't feel like doing my taxes, but I'm going to have to do my taxes, all right? We don't feel like putting in the work, but it's necessary to the process. It helps us become who God has called us to be. And everything in life that's worth fighting for, it, it's difficult. It takes work. But at the end of the day, this is the most important relationship we can invest in outside of our relationship with Jesus. And I just got to encourage you today, your marriage isn't measured by your feelings. Marriage is measured by commitment. And I want to encourage you today that maybe your marriage has been struggling. Maybe it's not where you want it to be. And you're saying, ah, this is not easy. You know, we've lost the feeling. We've lost the passion. I want to encourage you with, with a truth that I've seen time and time again that is shown to be true in all kinds of people who've studied different marriages. This is something amazing. Feelings actually follow commitment. How about that? You choose to go all in and say, I'm giving this 100%. The feelings will follow. You can have what you've been dreaming about. Your marriage is not a lost cause. I'll say this again. Your marriage isn't measured by your feelings. It's measured by your commitment, and it'll be as good as you both decide it will be. So go all in. Don't fall into the trap of, you know, looking for a better deal. No. You made a commitment. You made a vow before God. Give it everything you've got, 100%. I promise our marriage will be about we and not me. Don't fall into the trap of being selfish. Don't give up just because things are difficult. Reevaluate. Sit down. Talk it through. Declare your intentions. Talk about what your next goals are going to be. Figure it out. Have some honest conversations. Pursue Jesus with everything you've got. Make him your highest priority and and pursue each other. It's not about me. It's about we. Would you bow your head and close your eyes with me today? I just want to pray a prayer of blessing over you because here's the truth. I think a lot of marriages are struggling right now. We know that to be true. And I just want to pray a prayer of blessing over everyone who is with us today and who has joined us that you would just be strong in these commitments that it would be the desire of your heart of every single person who's here today, who's joining us online, any of our campuses. It's important for me to make sure that we're all on the same page. When we talk about vow number one, we say, I promise that God will be my one and my spouse will be my two. We've got to make sure that our hearts are lined lined up with who Jesus is and what he's done for us. And I just want to make sure today that you have a chance to say yes to Jesus, that you're building that foundation on the most important block. You can't miss that piece. And so before we're dismissed today, I'm going to give everybody a chance to say yes to Jesus and make sure you're building your life on that number one priority. But for you who are married today, I just make sure you're making it your second priority to pursue your two. Your spouse is your your most important human relationship. Make sure you're giving this relationship everything you've got. In addition to that, make sure that you're not falling into that trap of selfishness, making it all about me instead of the we. 
because you made a commitment, you entered into a sacred covenant, two have become one. And you've got to give it everything that you've got. So make that commitment today. I promise our marriage will be about we and not me. It's a great starting point to start repairing what has frayed and come out stronger than you've ever been. And so as we close today, let me pray this prayer of blessing over you. God, would you bless us and keep us? Would your face shine upon us and be gracious to us? God, would you turn your face toward us today and just give us your peace? Any marriage relationships that are going through a difficult time right now, God, I'm asking for your peace to fill that relationship, for your wisdom to be had, for your grace to lead, and for your joy to be found. God, lead us and guide us and direct us and help us to make you our highest priority and our spouses our number two. God, help us to not fall into the trap of make, making it all about ourselves, about me. Help us to focus on the we. God, we, we give our marriages to you today, and we pray this in your name. And together we say amen. And before we go today, I would just ask that you would stand where you're at and join me in saying this prayer because here's the thing. Here at Crossroads, we want to make sure that everybody has a chance to say yes to Jesus. i got to be honest with you, it's been a long time. I, I would say I honestly can't remember the last Sunday that we had where someone didn't say yes to Jesus. And I'm thrilled that every single week people are encountering Jesus, they're saying yes, and lives are being changed. And so these moments are incredibly important. If you're here today and you've not said yes to Jesus, I invite you in joining all of us in saying this prayer together. Let's read this prayer out loud and pray this prayer together. It says this, Jesus, today I am making you my one. You are Lord of all. Forgive me from my sins. Fill me with your spirit so I can follow you. You gave your life for me. Today I'm giving mine for you. Thank you for loving me. Amen. Hey, can we give God the glory and God the praise today because he is worthy and he is good. He loves us with an extravagant love and the beautiful thing about marriage is that gives us a platform for us to reflect that love and to share that with someone else. If you said yes to Jesus for the first time today, we would love to get to know you and help you take your next steps. We have a gift for you. We're gonna give you a brand new Bible and Keith would love to give that to you. Keith, wave your hand at Come forward, meet Keith as we leave and say hello to him. We wanna go on this journey with you. Crossroads, you are loved. Go in the grace and peace of Jesus this week and be blessed. Have a great week. We'll see you next Sunday.